Tex. Well, Mr. White, you've just seen the whispering skull with your own two eyes. Yeah, it's mysterious, all right. Funny no hoof marks. Well, never is. It's been going on for weeks. Trailing this whispering skull is kind of keeping you away from your law practice in Piute Springs, isn't it? Well, you see, the sheriff of Piute happens to be Ellen Jackson's father. And, uh, well, they're friends of mine. Oh, I get it. The sheriff hasn't been able to arrest the skull, so you've put away the law books to help out. Oh, no, not entirely. You see, there have been a lot of strange things going on. First, the stage was held up. Then several ranchers were killed. Mike Coran was the first to see the skull, but nobody has got close enough to him yet to identify him. Uh -huh. Let's backtrack from where we heard the first shot. Fine. That's who it is, eh? Yeah, that's it. Oh, Sheriff. Look what I found in my office this morning. A warning from the Whispering Skull. The same kind you found in your land office, Mike. Yeah. Leave town or you'll be next. Signed, the Whispering Skull. I don't scare easily, Sheriff, and I don't believe in ghosts, even if most of the people in this town do, who've already moved away. But I don't intend to be any target for a night-riding skull. If the skull's got his mark on you, Duke, how do you intend to get away? Get him before he gets me. If the Sheriff won't hit a posse, I will. We'll ride. Let's get Jefferson in the empty store. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's this all about? Nelson, we know you're the 
skull. Yeah, and you killed Lee Jeffers. The skull rode a dark horse, and that horse out there is dark. He's your man, Sheriff. We'll give him a quick, fair trial, and if he's found guilty, hanging won't take long. Wait a minute, now, I ain't no wood skull. I, I don't have nothing to do with ghosts. They, they scare me to death. Hey, you are the law. Make them let me go. Wait, he's not the skull. What makes you so sure? Does he look like the kind that would ride a horse that makes no sound when his feet hit the ground? No. He's not the skull, that I'm sure. Well, if he isn't, who is? Well, maybe you are. You or you. Perhaps I am. Who can tell? We'll take him into town and give him a fair trial. Nope, we'll treat it. I'll drill the man that dropped that noose over his head. Hanging a man without due process of law is murder. Thanks, Tex. How'd you get here? His horse didn't make any noise. Oh, I heard it. You're so busy trying to hang me, you couldn't hear nothing. Maybe he's... Who's the one the noose? Step down. I'm glad trying to hang a man with his own rope. If you think he's the skull, why don't you ask him the questions you asked the other fellow? Or maybe you don't trust that gun of his. I'll ask him when I'm ready. Yeah, but you ain't ready now. Want this private, or can they all listen? There's nothing private about it, Judge. I want you to sign that warrant. What's the idea, Marvin, asking me to sign a warrant for the arrest of the Skull when we don't know who we're looking for? We know who we're looking for. The Whispering Skull. Sign it so I can serve it. Well, I'm waiting, Judge. I'll serve this between now and midnight. No, boys, I'll serve it alone.
something funny about that. Marvin riding out with a warrant to serve on the skull alone. Yeah, did you notice the judge didn't want to sign it? I've been suspicious of the judge all along. He looks like the skull to me. If Marvin thought he had the skull in the judge, would he be riding out of town looking for him? I thought myself the judge acted kind of funny. Oh, he, he's always like that. Suspicious of everything and everybody. Well, I sure hope he don't look my way. Once was enough for me. Let's have a talk with the judge. Uh, you all go first. Come on in, Mike. Have a drink with us. No, thanks. I got to get back to the office. We're going to stick around here waiting for the judge. I think that judge came from Duke's place.
Mr. Omri insisted on going into the back room. When you told us nobody was supposed to go in there. You know what's in there? Yes, of course I do. Marvin Jackson, the sheriff. He's dead. So would you be if you had a 45 slug in you? How do you know he's got a 45 slug in him? Well, I was in here with Duke and the others. I just left when I heard the shot and came right back in. They were all here. I went in with Duke and we saw what happened. I told them to keep everyone out till I got Doc Humphreys. Go ahead, Doc, and examine the corpse. There's no corpse in there. Yeah, I must be seeing things. The sheriff was there, all right. And he's not there now. Well, uh, dead men can't walk, uh, or can they? How do we know he was dead? Marvin Jackson is dead. Well, how do you account for him being out here? Yes, when a moment ago he was in Duke's office. He was in my office, all right. Yeah, I saw him myself. Uh, say, you don't think that whispered skull had anything to do with this, do you? Marvin was a fool setting out to serve a warrant on the skull. It looks that way, Judge. Let's take him inside. We'll put him in the empty store. Marvin's daughter. Hello, Ellen. Hello, Peg. What's wrong? Come into your father's office a minute. Where's Dad? Something's happened to him, I know. I've felt it ever since I received his letter three days ago. We just found him. Sit down, Ellen. I guess none of us need say much, Ellen. I understand. Read this letter from Father, Tex. It will explain a lot of things. You see, Father knew the Whispering Skull. I know who the Whispering Skull is. I can hardly believe it, Ellen. I can place my hands on the skull any time of the day or night. out and the secret of why his horse makes no noise as ever your dad. Too bad you didn't get here sooner, Ellen. You might have known your father's secret. Are you sure your father never gave you any idea of who he thought the skull might be? No. I want to talk to you, Doc. All right. Secret? That's right, Doc. A dead man can't. But this man is not dead. It seems impossible for him to be alive, but he is. Doc, we've got to hide Marvin Jackson and keep him alive. We're both taking a risk. If we take him away and he lives, fine. But if he dies, how are we going to explain why we took a dead man? 
to the skull, the sheriff of Paiute is dead. Now, if we can keep him alive so he can talk, any risk we run will be worth it. Well, minutes count right now, Doc. Do I try it alone, or are you with me? We'll work together, Mr. Reno Carson will do for the time being. Where can we hide him? Well, we're standing over the best place I know of right now, the cellar of this store. Folks are scared, they won't even open the door to see what I'm selling. Fixing to bury the sheriff, well, I might as well start traveling. Well, I think we have found a man to replace him. Wait a minute. If you gents think you've got the skull again, you're mistaken. I ain't forgetting the reception you give me coming into Paiute. Put up your shooting iron. You can use it to good reason if you'll listen. I'll put it away when you explain what you want. Now start chirping. Well, I don't have to tell you that Paiute needs a new marshal. A man to fill Marvin Jackson's boots. And the judge seems to think that you're the man for the job. You're not getting me to take that job. Not in this town. Lawmen don't live long enough around here. Well, there's good money in it. Yeah. But you can't spend money where them sheriffs want it. Besides, I want to die with my boots on, so it won't hurt my toe when I kick the bucket. Here's to the new washroom. Well, I ain't drinking to that. Well, I just pulled in Mr. Smith, Tex, to take over Marvin Jackson's place. Well, that's fine. I think you'll make a good sheriff. Your first job is already cut out for you. Come with me. Jackson's body. You'd better hurry up about it. Yeah, and uh, if you've got any ideas about giving Leif a funeral, you better do that quick before his body disappears. Who do you suspect? Well, uh, I don't know nothing about being a marshal. Uh, I don't know where to start. Uh, who should I suspect? Myself? Hey, what am I saying?
dad's letter made it plain that he knew who the skull was. Yes. Well, I can't figure out why, if he knew who the skull was, that he didn't arrest him instead of waiting to get shot in the back. Well, you read dad's letter. He said he could place his hand on the skull any time of the day or night. I have my suspicions, too. Well, look, Ellen. If you know who he is, please tell me so I can go after him. What do you think, Doc? He has a chance. It's a slim one, but a chance.
working your skull idea all right. Nobody suspects us in any way. Not even Tex Haines. <laughs> no. So long as nobody knows who the real skull is, we might as well keep the blame on his shoulders for everything we do. Yeah, but what are we going to do when the real skull finds out we've gone in on his setup? Well, we won't have to worry about that after tonight. Islers, you make sure you get that strong box off the stagecoach tonight. We'll have enough money to buy up that range property with the rocks on. We'll all be rich. and take him down the road. Man. Well, what do you know about that? Say, I don't mind going back now we got the skull. He isn't the real skull. He ain't. What are his chances, Doc? Good. I'm glad you're here. Marvin's been trying to talk. Don't worry, Ellen. Your dad's going to pull through. Just sit here, quiet. Duke, stage just got in. Something's going wrong. Something's gone wrong. We'd better start heading for new parts. And me, what we know is a million dollars laying around loose on the ground. Oh, no.
Why, that's Isla's. Yeah, you've had this girl in your camp all along and didn't even suspect it. Well, who would? Well, we can all rest easy now that you got him, Marshal. Oh, I didn't get him. Uh, uh, another skull shot him. Another skull? Yeah. I saw the judge leave town the same time you did, Duke. He hasn't come back. I've had him pegged for the skull from the start, and you know it. You're right, Carter. The judge is a skull, and he killed Islands. They surprised me. My back was turned. I looked over my shoulder and saw Duke. He fired. That's all I remember. I want to talk with you, Duke. I want to talk with you too, Judge. In just a moment. showdown, Duke.
haven't got anything on me. What did you run for? Let's go back to town. You got some explaining to do. Mike here found a lot of these rocks on the range. He thought they were diamonds. He wanted to buy the land cheap, so as the skull, he tried to frighten the ranchers into selling. Those he couldn't scare, he killed. Duke found some of the stones, tried to beat the skull to his own game. What they both didn't know is that these kind of diamonds are worthless. We'll hold the whole kit and caboodle for trial. How do you go, Judge? So long, Doc. Bye, right, Dave. Good luck. Bye, right, Dave. I'm afraid my heart is just the same, dear. So I'll wait in case you change your mind. Maybe I should say it's best we're parting. Maybe I have a love with a heart too blind. Somewhere you find I will understand And I won't blame you But I'll wait in case you change your mind If you think your love for me has ended Thank you, doing, Panhandle. Dig it for divers. We're rich. Come on, help me. Forget it. They're worthless. Oh, the ones I got ain't. They cut glass. Well, that's about all they're good for, Panhandle. Oh, shucks. I thought I was going to be rich. <laughs> <laughs>